Y'all ready for this? <gasps> okay, now I'm ready. Hi, I'm Britt. And my name is Alyssa. And this is Skeletales. And this is a podcast where we strive to answer the age-old question of, is my dead grandma watching me? Alyssa, you know, after you've had too much to drink, and then you lay down to go to bed, and yeah. everything starts spinning, mm-hmm. and you're like, drunk, too drunk. Too drunk. Why? Nope. That spinning is your dead grandma. <laughs> Graham, she's inside my head. She's, she's mixing like, up my brains. She loves to fuck with you. And she's like, serves you right for drinking too much on Cinco de Mayo. Oh, she's making me want to barf. Grandma's yes. like, you're going to pay. You're going to exactly. pay for that fifth shot today. What exactly. A drunk episode? Are you All serious, you young feel. lady? A, mm-hmm. a, a drunk episode, really? You know, oh, you know how bad alcohol is for you. Yeah, you better be going to church on Sunday. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not. But we don't oh just talk God. about dead grandma. Oh, sorry. Were no, you going to go to church? No, go ahead. Okay. We don't just talk about dead grandmas. We talk about paranormal ghosts. Supernatural. Yeah, weird shit. Doppelgangers, closet ghosts, corner ghosts, all sorts of ghosts. What else, Britt? So, Alyssa, I'm just going to stop you right there. Okay. We have a very special episode tonight. What oh. are we doing tonight? Today is, tonight is a live episode where everyone watches us suffer from technical difficulties <laughs> for 43 minutes before we actually get into the episode. Isn't it wonderful and magical? Yes. Here it was just are. a test to see how our true fans were. Congratulations. <laughs> We've trimmed off You've the You've made fat. it. <laughs> the gold is, all, gold is left here, people. <laughs> oh, Lord. Next time, we're not going to mess around with that Facebook Live bullshit. Go straight to the Zoom. Right? No, for real. We've learned or a lesson. Something. We have learned and we have YouTube grown. Live? I don't know. You know? And it's not just any Facebook Live. It is the drunk episode where yes. you, dear listeners, are getting us skeletanked. Yes, we, we are, um, are already two shots in, so you're a little late to the game, listeners. So get your margarita, catch up. What? So you're drinking a gigantic, like mm-hmm. the most giganticest bottle of champagne I've ever seen. I think it might seen. be a gallon. Can you get a gallon <laughs> of champagne? <laughs> That's too much. <laughs> I'm showing everything. It is like a gallon. What, you know what goes really well with tequila shots? <laughs> champagne. Oh that yeah, nothing. That's what goes great with tequila. So here we are. Um, I'm about to like maybe pee my pants a little though, because I'm in terror of having to pop this cork. You gonna and lose I- an eye? Yeah, don't point it at you. Away, away. <laughs> point it away. Uh, it's not even turning. But make sure it also I- goes into the mic for dramatic effect. I will not get my tech support guy in for this. <laughs> <laughs> now it's gonna be 45 minutes of Brett opening her champagne. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers! Overcoming fears. Okay. Here we go. Oh. I'm going for number three now. Oh, I think I you. might be drinking more than the required number. <laughs> we need to. Uh, oh, no. All right. I don't have a champagne flute, so I'm drinking out of a margarita glass for Cinco de Mayo. <laughs> <laughs> does it have, all, does it have like crystal rims? It doesn't. That is, Brit. I can't tell because of the camera, it distorts things, but that margarita glass looks gigantic. Your <laughs> champagne looks gigantic. It's it all looks be gigantic. A good night. Before we start, though, um, do you have anything that you need to talk about or want to talk about before we get going? Oh, Jesus. Okay, I do have one thing I want to talk about. Okay. And I let me look at the names here because I, I'm I'm going to okay it doesn't look like the person is in here so I did a little promotional video I don't know if you all saw it for Skeletales where I have good old uh, James Ol and me are doing a video and so I tagged that one ventriloquism just because it was so awful it was so stupid <laughs> and a fellow reached out to me and was like hey I'll offer you a free ventriloquist class your show sounds so fun like for free I'll, I'll teach you some ventriloquism and I was like <laughs> you suck so bad <laughs> Obviously, I suck so bad. But then I was like, I'm a podcast. Like, can you imagine? Like, that 
a ventriloquism podcast, I might start one now. Like, I'll take that. James Ol and me. <laughs> hey, we're, Alyssa. We're... <laughs> I'm going to tell you some spooky stories. No, you can't move your lips, so it'll have to. Hey, Alyssa. Hey, I'm going to tell you some stories. This is what everybody wants to hear with their own little podcast. <laughs> okay, I'm not good at ventriloquism. It either. was so sweet, but I was like, oh, I'm sorry. No, I just, That's it was so darling. horrible that I had to make fun of my own self. Do you have anything <laughs> that uh, you'd, you'd like to tell me about yes. today? Yes. Oh. I did I didn't earlier when we spoke on the phone, but I had a surprise visit from Julie, who we all know from as Elisa's mom. Yes. She stops by. She says, I have a Mother's Day gift for you. And I'm going to show you and you're going to tell everybody what my Mother's Day gift is. <gasps> It's an Ouija board. Ouija board. Yes! Ouija. Yes! I oh. have my own Ouija board. <gasps> Julie. So excited. You're I'm the best. Stoked. And then, not only that, S- superstar Julie tells me the most bomb story, which I'm going to tell you tonight. Oh, right now or like in a minute? Or are you going to yeah, first right open now. the gates to hell in your closet with that Ouija board? We're maybe going to save our next live event for the Ouija board. I'm not going to open it tonight, <laughs> but I do have a fun I do have a fun comment to say. On the back, it has little like suggestions on what to ask the Ouija board. Um, does Tommy know I like him? You told him. <laughs> My favorite though is, will I ever be tall enough to slam dunk? How tall will I be? <laughs> Wait, oh, oh, so can give you the number, your height and like numbers and inches. <laughs> oh, yes. so you're, you know, your ghost spirit is like, why are you wasting my fucking time? But sure, you're going to be 6'2 and slam dunk. Good job, kid. Good job, so Bobby. helpful. Julie, that's such a great present. That's awesome. Yeah. We will use it. We we now have. Oh, but no one's seen the next episode. We We've got some tips coming. For how to use a Ouija board in an upcoming episode. So you'll have to stay tuned. So I feel like that was a gift to me, too. So thank you, Julie. Truly, (laughs) truly. All right. So I'm going to dive into Julie's story because it's a good one. So she was recounting. She First of all, she was like, I can't believe you've never done Ouija before. And I was like, I don't just never had one. And so now things are changed. She was telling me, though, like, oh, she used to do it at summer with kids, you know, in the uh, campground that she was at in this haunted uh, place that they camped. Um, but she said that there was one time when she was about 14 years old. And I, I write down, just so everybody knows quick pause. I write down my stories so I don't forget them. So if you see me looking down, that's what I'm doing. I'm reading the story. That she's I've cheating. Learned. Everybody, I, she's cheating. I, <laughs> I read too. everything word for word. I don't like, <laughs> I don't wing anything. All right. So Julie okay. has a, ooh, a ca- summer camp Ouija story. This is this not is a like camp. A horror movie. That was oh. just one. But she was remembering as she's telling me that she was like, oh my gosh, I have a really good one to tell you. Okay. She's 14 years old. Her and her sister and their friend Jamie were doing the Ouija board at their parents' house. And they had just newly built a second story to the house. And it's uh, it's unfinished, though. So it's like bare wood floors, blank walls, and it's just dark and spooky. It's oh, perfect for yes, Ouija. Yes, that's exactly what I'm thinking. Um, and so they're all there. They're getting connected. And they end up connecting with this spirit named Lacey. And they were asking their like middle school type questions. But their friend Jamie, who was there, had asked, at what age will I die? <gasps> you're not and supposed to ask that. Does the Ouija board tell you not. on the back of the box, do not ask it says, ask these questions, not these questions. There, I didn't read all of the cautionary tales, but you should not ask that question. Reckless. Okay. She did. She's reckless. Um, but Lacey, Lacey responds. She says that Julie's going to live to be sometime in her 80s. Oh. Awesome. Not bad. Uh, Julie can't remember what age her sister's going to die, but I imagine <laughs> it's probably got to be a normal age. And then uh, – Lacey, the spirit, tells Jamie that she's going to die at the age of 35. Well, Jamie's, like, taken aback by this and asks, um, sorry, I'm letting people in. 
I know. It's like, this is, it's very, I'm trying to forget there's a, a, for this. an audience. So then, um, so Lacey responds. Car crash. <gasps> And all, all the while this is going on, I've never done Ouija before, but apparently you have a piece of paper with you. So when the planchette is moving, you can say, you know, C-A-R, you're writing down. They yeah. have written down notes. And so um, fast forward to last year, Julie gets a call from her sister and the sister's at the parent's house and says, guess what I found? I found the notes from this Ouija session. <laughs> And Julie's caught completely off guard. And because three years earlier, she had learned that her middle school friend, Jamie, had been walking her dog at about 8 p.m. at night on Christmas Eve and was hit and killed by a car. Oh, no At the age of 35. Shut up. And Dude. Julie had completely forgotten about that Ouija session until her sister brought up the note and then was like, holy shit. She was 35. My mind is blown. Like, I think it's sold as a toy. It's sold as a toy. This is now the yeah. second story we've heard about someone. Well, Mel also had an experience with a Ouija board where she feels like she invited something in. But like two, that was like a confirmed like shit lined up with what was being said. And then again, I'm going to hint to an episode you guys haven't seen yet, which is super fun for you. But we also got like some information <laughs> that they are real. Like they are not toys. It's just a medium. It's just a tool. Like it might be sold as a tool, a toy, but it's just a, a tool to commune with the dead and whatnot. Oh my God, that is yeah. freaky. Are, are we sure we still want to do this? <laughs> I'm totally gonna I, ask it when you're when you're gonna die. First question: I, When is I, Brit gonna die? No, how? Fuck no, don't do it. I'm gonna. I will. <laughs> no, I will run away. I don't want to know. Oh my lord! Oh, yeah, uh, first story down. Done. Great story, Julie. All right, Great I'm ready story. for my next drink. Oh Jesus! Okay, did I'm I already do two you. or three? I think I'm on. I did We've three. We both done three. Okay. Well, I, I'm only at <laughs> five. Says, Eh. Oh, fuck it. <laughs> fuck it. I'm I'm right. doing like so little. I've got like, four. I don't know. It probably is an ounce by the a doctor would not recommend what we're doing or this when I say, <laughs> look, at Brit. are you chugging a whole glass of champagne for each drink? Just a margarita glass worth. <laughs> Oh, I guess not it's chugging. Same... No, God, no, 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 no. Okay, I'll sip this one. I'm not going to shoot this one. I'll sip this one to make it savor. But yeah, three okay. shots in. Cheers, my friend. All right, let's what? hear. Cheers. Oh wait, and we should this read drink. his. Yes, coming to you from this. Oh, this one's also from Kendall. Kendall got me two drinks. Ha <laughs> All right, do you? Know and this one's from Christine. Thanks, Thank Christine. you, Christine. Thanks, Kendall. Cheers. I'm making it auditory, so for whenever people listen to this in the future. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, okay, I thought I would bring a story of my own just to give you guys all a glimpse inside the head of Alyssa of little Allie Wilson from fourth or fifth grade, a story I wrote. No way! Um, inspired very much probably by Stephen King. I'm pretty, I'm, I was definitely in elementary school, fourth or fifth grade. Okay, are you ready for this? So ready. <laughs> it's so fucked up. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's good. A gloomy night in Schwartzville. On October 1st, 1978, a gloomy night in Schwartzville lurked a desperate kidnapper. On Maple Drive, he found a kid named Jenny Volage. Jenny's parents were at a movie. Jenny was sliding down her slide when out of nowhere, the kidnapper grabbed her and covered her mouth so she couldn't scream. The kidnapper took Jenny to a cave near the canal. That's the Erie Canal. That was in Fairport where I grew up. There's a canal nearby. Took her to the canal. The kidnapper murdered her and threw her into the canal. <laughs> Alyssa! Baby you... Alyssa! <laughs> no! <laughs> Can you imagine being my teacher? Oh, it gets worse. Like it... <laughs> Jenny... <laughs> Jenny's parents were looking for Jenny for an hour. Then Mrs. Volage picked up the phone to report Jenny Volage, age nine, pink Darien Lake shirt, 
blue jeans, blonde, oily hair, big blue eyes, and worn out penny loafers missing. Darien Lake is in a theme park near us. So detailed. So detailed. I was like into this. I vaguely, I do remember writing this and being like so stoked on it. I was like, fuck yeah. (laughs) Fuck yeah. I'm killing this. Two weeks later, they found Jenny's body in the canal. They had a funeral. Mary Selsta, Jenny's best friend, and Jenny's relatives came. That night when Maria slept, she heard a soft voice calling her, Maria, Maria, help me, Maria. Maria thought it was her mother calling for help, so she went to her mother's room and said, What do you want me to help you with, Mom? Her mother woke up and said, I didn't call you, Maria. You must have been dreaming. So Maria went back to bed. Again, she heard the soft voice, Maria, Maria, help me, Maria. The second time she heard this voice, she recognized it as being Jenny's. (gasps) Maria sat up in her bed, terrified. Maria asked, is that you, Jenny? The voice said, yes, it is I. The voice said, (laughs) the voice said, Maria, meet me at the graveyard at 2.30 p.m. after school. I will be faintly transparent, so don't be afraid. (laughs) (laughs) I love this so much. (laughs) The the next day after school, Maria went to the graveyard at 2.15 just to make sure she wasn't late. Maria looked at her digital watch with compass, and there was one more second until 2.30. She looked up, and there, floating over tombstones, was a blurred object. As the object moved closer, Maria moved back. Then she remembered the soft words of Jenny, I will be faintly transparent, so don't be afraid. (laughs) Maria stopped moving back. The (laughs) object stopped about five feet away from her. Maria, the object said, it's me, Jenny. Maria didn't respond for a while, but then she started to stutter. What do you want? Jenny said, you know, I got killed and thrown in the canal. But what you don't know is who did it. I'll tell you, but you must believe me. Maria listened closely. Jenny said, the kidnapper was old Mr. Connive from Elmer Street. (laughs) When Mr. I'm sorry. When Maria heard this, she almost fainted. She said, but he's just a sweet old man. That's what you think, said Jenny. When we got to the cave, sorry, this is uh, Jenny continuing her story. When we got to the cave, when we got to a cave near the canal, he took off a mask and stood up straight. It turns out old man connive is a tall scar faced man. I lost my place. Oh, no, no. Okay. Maria was very surprised. Out of all the people in the town, it was old man connive. Maria said, I still don't understand why you would to- told me to come here. Jenny told her that she wanted her to report it to the police. So she did. The police said they had to have more evidence. So Maria took them to the cave. There they found blood stains on the ground. About 15 minutes later, they went to Old Man Knives house to look for some bloodstained clothes. After three hours of looking, one of the officers leaned against the wall to rest and pressed some kind of secret panel that opened a secret Ooh. closet. He looked into it and found a whole rack of bloodstained clothes. Oh. The, the police put Old Man Knive in jail for a life sentence, and Maria never heard Jenny's voice ever again. Alyssa! Amazing! This is why you can do such incredible episode descriptions. I've been planning this my whole life since elementary school. Can you believe? My mom sent this to me a few years ago. I remember writing it and I was like, I think that was pretty fucked up. Let me like, (laughs) let's see what it was. Literally. Could you imagine what is anyone here a teacher? Because like, what would you do if a student turned that essay? If your like nine year old student turned that essay in, ten Mike years old, Mike says for sure you would have to visit the school counselor school counselor. After that. Yes, but then but, also it, like such great writing though. It was the eighties. I want to kind of think I like went on display in a mall or something. Like I was so damn proud of this, and then. Uh, I can like I know Indiglo watches weren't a thing yet, so there's this timestamp like that was like 92 or something, so it was pre 92. Okay. So 
Yes. I act like this is like a new interest in my me, mine, of mine. No, forever. <laughs> I've been um, messed up. So the and a lot of people have asked us in the past, like, how did you guys get into this? And you're just like, from a young age, I was writing murder mysteries. I see a lot it. of Scooby-Doo influence in this. <laughs> <laughs> he did. He pulled off his mask. It's That's me, one of my main Mr. Yeah. <laughs> Fretcher, whatever his name was. Connive. I don't Connive. remember. Like, I oh, made yeah, up these names. Conniving. It's yes. so good. I love it. So, so I thought that would be a special little share for our first live episode. Possibly our last after the first 45 minutes. We'll <laughs> I know. See. I know. It might be a while before a second. So enjoy, everybody. Uh, how are you feeling with your drink? You feeling good? Oh, I'm feeling great. I do actually need some water. I have to like water drinks. So a couple people have suggested that I water down my drinks and try to <gasps> For uh, fleece, shame. fleece our dear listeners who paid the good money to watch us get drunk. Yes. Hell no. We do not water them down. Um, I do want to, I know I posted a picture earlier, but I bought these super like all natural vitamins. You know, they're all natural because they're bright purple. That I'm gonna take. <laughs> yeah, and they're indiglo, <laughs> indiglo vitamins. I actually <laughs> saw that. I was like, Britt didn't wreck it. Like, I felt like you were holding out on me a little bit, like making plans. You're like, I didn't. You didn't say, hey, go pick up those <laughs> anti hangover pills. pills. Yeah, <laughs> I'll just rely on my crystals. I'm I gonna keep one. I actually got this idea. I, I don't know if they're still listening or not, but uh, my friend, you know, Natalie and Derek, they mm-hmm. had some at their at their wedding. They had a big bowl of hangover pills for everybody, which was very generous. That was their good. They're like, <laughs> <laughs> like just uh, you could take a yeah, handful that of was them. They're like gift for everybody. That's hilarious. Uh, they did like leave. <laughs> so, as some may know or some may not, I am now fully vaccinated, and I am thrilled about it cheers to that holy Fucking shit cheers Woo. to that ding 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 so, i'm only 2.5 g enabled at this moment yeah Woo, Katie. katie's got the full vax everyone <laughs> if you got fully vaccinated Woo. or even one shot give it give it a drink Woo, michael yeah. hell yeah yeah, yeah. Woo. Oh, margarita glass too <laughs> <laughs> love it um, which means that I'm seeing family again, because that honestly, number one priority right now, I want to see all of my family who have not seen in over a year. And so I stopped in Fort Worth and uh, at my brother's house who lives there, older brother, Doug. Doug. But while I was there, they had a friend over. She's been a friend of the family since I was a kid. Her name is Kari. And this story comes from her. It's not a ghost story, but it's sure spooky as hell. <laughs> so this story takes place in Texas. Surprise, surprise. Uh, and Kari at the time was a senior in high school and her sister was a sophomore. Actually, all of my stories have like sisters entwined. And oh. then my sister's here tonight, too, which I'm excited about. Oh, wait, did she leave? She may have left. Oh, she shit. Sure left. Oh, no, no, she is. <laughs> I think I just don't have people on double screen. Okay, sorry. Back to the story. <laughs> um. Oh, this is what I'm. I'm getting tipsy now. I'm laughing a lot. I'm yeah, my focus. My focus is. I'm sweating a little bit, you guys. Okay, I'll update you on my physical. I'm like hot. My focus. I'm like I got to pay attention to Brit. That's my All inner right, this dialogue. Isn't counting as a drink, but I do feel because I've started. I just need a little drink to get through this story. Okay. <laughs> All right, Kari. She's in high school. Her sister's in high school. Kari's in her room doing homework, listening to music, and she hears her name, Kari, Kari, getting whispered. So she get, gets up and she goes into her sister's room and she's like, what? Are you trying to talk to me? She sees her sister sitting at her desk, motionless, sitting perfectly still. And she, her sister says, Don't look, but I think that someone is looking in my window. (laughs) So quick sidebar, I'm going to describe the sister's room. It's located at the front of the house, and the room has floor-to-ceiling windows. So they're really tall, long windows. Um, Perfect view of the yard, but also perfect view 
for somebody looking in. So Kari is standing there trying her hardest not to look at the window. Excuse me. Uh. <laughs> oh my God, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Champagne for days. Wow, I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Those normally get edited out as well, everybody. But yeah, so behind live the scenes. and charming. <laughs> Here we go. Okay, so Kari says, all right, I'm going to back up to the light switch. I'm going to turn the lights off. And on the count of three, we're both going to look and see who's looking in the window. Because like with the light on, you can't yeah, see. Yeah, so it's the like reflection. the mirror, which is already an issue. For real. So then they back up. <laughs> She's backing slowly to the light. And then she goes, three, two, one. And she turns out the light. And then they both look out the window. Sitting there outside her sister's window, under the full moon, is a teenage boy. He's about their age. And he's, oh, wait, I said sitting. Standing there outside okay. the window, completely naked. Oh, yeah. Is This teenage boy, and he's facing them at the window. Oh, no. Okay. But then he's almost like in this weird trance, and then he, like, turns, and he waits a few seconds, and then he turns again, and he waits a few seconds, and he turns again, and this is keeps turning around and around. Kari yells at her sister, and she goes... Go get dad. No. And so her sister runs off and her sister's in hysterics. Her dad grabs the biggest flashlight you can find. It's also kind of a weapon. He runs out of the house just ready to beat this kid's ass. And by the time he gets out to the front yard, the kid's dashed off. Nowhere to be found. He's run off. Did they watch him run off? No, I he think by that dissolve. point they both ran out of the room and they were like, Dad, just go get okay, him. Okay. And, you know, and he's gone. He's gone. So they call the police and the police come and they were like, oh, yeah, we've had several calls tonight about a naked dude doing weird shit in front of people. <laughs> exactly. <videos."> okay. <laughs> yeah. The very next night, he comes back. This time, he was sitting outside the sister's window. We should give this sister a name. What should we call her? Her name is uh, Brizel. Brizel. He's sitting out Brizel's, outside Brizel's window, not naked. He's wearing boxers this time. He's cross-legged in front of the window, and he has his hands on his knees, and he's uh, blindfolded. He's blindfolded himself. Well, so Kari walks by her sister's room. And she sees the dude sitting there, but then her sister is sitting on the other side of the window, also sitting cross-legged, watching the kid from the window. And Kari's like, are you crazy? (laughs) No! And they yell for dad immediately. I love it. Yes, and. Yes, and. I will do that. Sure. This is what we're doing. I'm into (laughs) it. So, dad... Fuck the flashlight. Grabs the shotgun this time. Oh, and he, I mean, Texas. We're in Texas, remember. Yeah. And okay. at this point, it's probably like 90s. Runs out the front door. And again, the kids already run off again. Cannot be caught. Shortly, the dad is like out chasing in the air, like looking around for this kid. And then the police show up. They didn't even call the police. The police were already on alert about this kid. So the dad says, you guys need to come back tomorrow night. Clearly, this kid's going to come back. And the dad is, like, determined to catch this guy. So he he gives Brazel. Is that what we named her? <laughs> her name is Brazel. <laughs> he gives Brazel a whistle. And he's like, for tomorrow night, you blew this whistle. <clears throat> tomorrow night arrives. The dad is sitting In the living room, shotgun in hand. He is, like, ready. Oh, yeah. Brazil has the whistle in hand. Sure enough, who shows up but Stalky McStalkerton. And this time, he's naked again. He's standing in front of the window. And he is, like, in this weird trance. And he's talking gibberish. And he's, like, not really, like, all there. And And he's, like walking around in this trance. And so the sister doesn't fool around this time. She grabs that whistle and she's, 
blowing the whistle. Dad, sitting at the front door, bolts out the front door. He catches the guy this time, tackles him, and then he just sits on him. Oh, so he's sitting on a naked teenager with he's a shotgun. On a naked teenager hand. on his front lawn with a shotgun. I'm glad and- you didn't shoot him, I suppose, if he's not a real threat, if he's not doing anything. I but think that- that's the thing. Is I, I think they real. I mean, by night three, they realize he's, I don't know if he's looking for attention or what. All right. But I have cop- a theory, but I want to hear. I want to hear this out. I want to hear it out. So the cops arrive. Turns out this teenager who's been tormenting the neighborhood has been sleeping in their bushes the whole time. (gasps) What? They find a rolled up mat, rations of food, and a jug of water. Turns out the scoop is that this kid is from Utah (sighs) and he knows (gasps) Brazil. Brazil had gone to Utah a few months earlier to visit friends, and they'd gone to a church dance. Remember, we're Mormon. Mormons. So, like, church okay. dances happen once a month. Yeah. Brazil had gone to a church dance, met this fella there, and they danced once, and he just professed his undying love for her and was like, I'm going to write you when you go back to Texas. And she was like, Dude, you're weird. And so she just like <laughs> blew him off. And then he like came to Texas. Jesus. Okay. So- one, I want to say that I did not realize that Mormons had a once a month church dance. <laughs> yeah, they not do. something that we in and the whole Catholic. Go- I want to say 14 is when you can start going to dances. Oh yeah. my God. And what- you have to have Bibles between you. How many? Uh, I think it's like, I don't know, 10 Bibles between you. <laughs> So you're like, dan- you know, you're supposed to be dancing like this, like a zombie dance. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So here's the kicker. Night number one, when naked bros in front of the window, Brazil recognizes him from that church dance. Oh. The whole time she knew who stalker dude was and she didn't tell anybody. She never fessed up. Was she like no. meeting him on the side? <laughs> No, she was not into him. He was just, he was a, an obsessed stalker. And I think she was a little embarrassed, honestly. Yeah, probably that, embarrassed. Like, that she, like, maybe, like, didn't, that she blew him off. And because she blew him off, he's, like, came to Texas to, like. Yeah. And also, you don't win a girl's heart by spinning around naked in front of her window. I'm sorry. Just one No. <laughs> okay. Um, Mel is asking, why was he naked and talking gibberish? Was he on drugs? Great question, Mel. If he was if he was Mormon, not he drugs. Was not on drugs. If anything, he was probably like speaking in tongues, p- possessed by like a a holier power, perhaps, or um, the you know the power of love. The power of love is that a song? How does that go? Oh, I'm. I, we will sing if I know it. The power <laughs> of love. I don't know if I know this one, though. This tune, this ditty, um. The power. No, I'm just keep gonna going. Make up a song. Go for it. You the solo. The power of love. Do it. Yeah. I made it up, and it number one charts hit. <laughs> That's my story, though. Good old stalker story. I was. I thought he was uh, sleepwalking. Is what I thought. I thought you were gonna say. I thought he was gonna be a sleepwalker. And then anytime you mentioned his hands, I thought the word penis was gonna follow shortly thereafter. <laughs> I. That's his where my hands brain is. Were on his knees. Yeah, you don't religion. like hanging out naked. Where were his clothes? Yeah. So he he trekked from more like from Utah to Texas without any like clothes. Maybe he spilled something on his clothes and stashed them in the bush with his satchel, and so, then just was like, "Wow, this is it! Like I've got my my you know bandana. I'm gonna blindfold <laughs> myself with and my oh, shorts, and I have and a his lot shorts of got dirty, and he just S- goes naked. So what happened to him? Uh, they didn't press charges, and he went back to Utah, and they just kind of were like, just don't come back to Texas, y'all. Oh, my Bye. God. That is creepy. You had told me you had a stalker story. I forgot that. I, I forgot about half three. Oh, like, that is creepy. I get why Brozell was embarrassed one time um, on the Jersey Shore where I used to vacation. 
Uh, <laughs> oh, I, I talked... thought you were going to talk about the TV show. All right. Oh, no, no. Real like life. Real, on the real, real life, life IRL Jersey Shore, um, I, I got to chatting with some French Canadian boy named Julien on Ooh. the beach. And he left a note in my in the windshield wiper of my car. It was uh-huh. like a poem about how my eyes were the deepest blue of the sea. And I was mortified and my brothers were making fun of me oh. non-stop i was oh, like yeah. crumple crumple like leave me alone so i get you brazil i'm sorry that happened oh god but yeah that was very mild my story is nothing compared to a naked dude but she was sitting cross-legged she was leading him on I know, a little bit she was she like, was like playing into it she oh, knew like, i mean like maybe you should kind of stay in the bushes i don't know like oh, maybe god oh <laughs> Uh, like maybe Dad said I mean, her straight. Kari said her straight. Um, I yeah, no, I don't want to. I don't want to encourage stalking at all. But I feel like part of me, as a fourteen-year-old kid, might be a little flattered. There might be a harsh portion of me that was like, "Oh, he likes me. He likes me this much." But <laughs> no, that's not a good sign. Red flags. And she's a, all around. you know a sophomore in high school. I don't know. Yeah, no, no, no. Okay, I just poured myself another drink. Me too. And this drink is from Melissa. Thank you, Mel. I, I appreciate you I have one. Oh, Christy. Christy got your drink. Christy. Christy got. Yeah. Thank you, Christy. I appreciate that. Woo. After this drink, then we're just drinking for fun. <laughs> mm-hmm. I have some people that I'm going to call out that should have bought me a drink, and then I'm going to drink. <laughs> <laughs> I support it. All right, what's your story? I'm ready. I'm not shaming anybody, but some I, I joked with somebody ahead of time. So that's Kira, that one. I'm talking about you, Kira. <laughs> We're calling um, people out. <laughs> um, okay, so I am doing a Skinwalker story. That is what I'm going to do. So this one comes from my dear friend, Ernie, who I met on Reddit. Found on Reddit. All right. <laughs> or maybe Facebook. I don't fucking know anymore. I stole this story from somewhere. You remembered everybody. a name, and that's progress. So, Ernie. I copy and pasted Thank a you. name, and I read it. <laughs> I remembered it from the time I read it off the paper to the time it came out of my mouth. All right. So, Ernie says, probably about eight years ago, a good friend of mine was going camping in Lone Pine, California with his brother. They were driving up the 395 North at around 1 a.m., Well, the road they were driving on was a two-lane road, one north and one south, with a center divider of trees on this section of road. He was asleep on the passenger side, and when waking up, noticed a deer that was keeping up with them at 50 miles per hour back in the trees that he could see thanks to the moonlight. Then... (laughs) <laughs> then I love the idea of just a, tr- a fucking deer booking it, keeping pace. <laughs> then he notices that it begins to vanish, then reappear, always keeping pace with them. He then sees it stand up, run on its hind legs like a mother effing Usain Bolt. <laughs> and that's the moment he popped awake and was like, what the fuck? He still didn't tell he his. popped awake. So he was kind of sleeping, but he was also awake. He's like looking In out the, the window. Car? Yeah, like okay. he's in the car, kind of dozing. He's looking out the window, kind of wake. He notices a, a a a deer running like aside them. Okay, and then it stands up and it starts running on its hind legs. Um, and I lost my place again, but it began. Oh, okay. He didn't still didn't tell his brother to not freak him out, but it began to run faster than the car, which caused him to lose and track. He's awake of it. now. He is awake. Yeah. Yeah. Now he is like fully awake. So it started running faster than the car, which caused him to lose track of it. As he was processing what the hell he just saw, his brother began screaming, then covered both of his eyes with his hands. Oh, no, you <laughs> the driver. The yeah. No. As my friend reached over to grab the steering wheel, he looked up to see what looked like an eight foot tall blue man with the legs, horns of a deer and upper torso head of a man. Torso slash head of a man. It leaned out from the center divider and just watched them pass my friend. Wait, and just watched them pass. My friend said it felt like slow motion. He said it really messed him up for a while. The end. 
So Skinwalker, someone asked, okay, a Skinwalker and Edminster Engler is telling us that a Skinwalker is a North American shapeshifter slash animal person. Kate is laughing at something real, real, real hard over there. Uh, <laughs> um, so a deer, <laughs> no, Bert's laughing at something Sorry, real hard. What? I'm just giggling. My sister said my story had a true skinwalker. <laughs> oh, beautiful. <laughs> Podcast over. Shut her down. This is done. Um Oh Lord! So I guess a skin—you know what—a skinwalker. I kind of researched it, not super yeah. hard, but apparently, I think a Native American lore and and uh, and Edminster Engler might be able to correct me. But I think there's like a rumor of maybe it was like a medicine man who got too power powerful or started to like practice more dark magic than than like the good magic. I'm fascinated by skinwalkers. I actually would like to do an episode on the skinwalker ranch. Oh, see, that's that, a that totally has, different I think, thing. One thousand stories at Skinwalker Ranch. But do you think that Skinwalker Ranch has a ton of stories about skinwalkers, Brett? The, they have. I. I. From what I little bit I've heard about Skinwalker Ranch, they have everything. They've got like ghosts, poltergeist. UFOs, Bigfoot, it's like all at Skinwalker Ranch, which is why I'm curious too. I thought it was mostly UFOs, but maybe not. I because I'm surprised at your curiosity. I'll be honest when you're like because UFO. I thought because it's like UFO Central, like Skinwalker Ranch is like supposedly where all the UFO shit is happening. There's a lot of energy. That whole Blink One Et Two dude, Tom DeLonge, super into Skinwalker (laughs) Ranch, like loves it. Um, so. This, though, of a freaking deer running faster than your car. Yes. Is that abnormal? Can deers run? Maybe this isn't weird. I don't know. Can deer run 55 miles an hour? Mm, I cheetahs can. Is that a cheetah? (laughs) A cheetah can. Uh, You know what's interesting, though, is that moment, and I kind of have had this before, where you're in this like half awake, half asleep, and then something's happening, and you're like, oh, wait. Wait, this isn't like a normal thing happening, and it just oh, yeah, snaps like, you wait. out of that. Like, but then the fact that it snaps him out of it, and it truly was like happening in real life. It wasn't some like weird dream, yeah, phase or whatever. Like he yeah. realized it. I love his analogy to Usain Bolt. Everyone in our comments is telling us, "Dear, do not run thirty-five miles an hour max." <laughs> That's it. They top out at Everyone thirty-five knows. miles an hour. Um, one time I was driving and we have a lot of bald eagles out here in Washington. I don't know about everywhere else if they've repopulated, but I've never seen so many bald eagles. I was driving down this road in Sammamish, which is the town next to me, and a bald eagle like flew right next to my car, like keeping pace. <gasps> Dead grandma. Dead grandma. I was like, Dead America. Grandma. Hell yeah. Fuck yeah. America. <laughs> That's how I felt. I was like, this is amazing. I love this country. Fucking America. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and this also okay. So none of this reminds me of any skinwalker, but this also reminds me of the time that I was almost fucking taken out by a deer running at the sand dunes in Washington and in, in Colorado, walking out of there, and all of a sudden it was like, it could have been a skinwalker. I don't know. It was like twilight. I couldn't see anything. Walking back to the car, and all of a sudden, something oh, like fucking. You were walking. I was you walking. Could you imagine? That's what the Ouija's board would have said. I I could have had a life where the Ouija board is like fucking how am I run. gonna die deer, deer crash yeah. deer, <laughs> deer fucking takes deer. me out um but yeah and then it turns into a blue devil or some shit yeah that's blue a good man. story yeah I we like should do more one. about skinwalkers okay done all right like- everybody oh look what if you is what is just, that vodka just hydrating i have my <laughs> That is it's even larger than your champagne. <laughs> what is that that you were drinking out of? It's like everything's if bigger in Texas. <laughs> no, I purchased on Amazon a half gallon water jug. It is huge. <laughs> go big or go home. Also, I gotta prepare my liver. Okay. Okay. So flashback to when I'm visiting family a couple of weeks and weekends ago. Kari tells her story, and it opens up the door to more stories. So this story comes from my sister-in-law, Vida. 
Ooh, Vera. <clears throat> this is actually her sister story, because we're going with my sister's theme. Sisters! <laughs> <laughs> I could try to do it. With the sisters! Theme song. I don't have <laughs> sisters. I can... Brothers! Um, this happens in... Uh, uh, actually, I don't know when this happens, but it was when her sister was going to college. So we'll say 10 years ago, um, happened at Mississippi University for Women in Columbus, Mississippi. Didn't know there was a Columbus, Mississippi or a MU, M-U-W University. And it's MU. an all women's college? No, they guys can come to. Wait, but- isn't four women in the name? Well, yeah, but then they have to keep with the modern times and make it all inclusive. So it's kind of like it w- in the town that I grew up, we have a Texas women's university, but everybody's invited. Anybody can go to TWU. Interesting. I mean, I'm all for that. I would just think they would drop the women's portion of the name if they were like women You'd think t- for everyone. Dated assholes. Nope. Not this year. <laughs> all right. So. <laughs> In the the buildings, though, on this campus dated back to, like, pre-Civil War. Super old Ooh, buildings. Okay. Her sister Hold on. Wrote, I forgot already. Where is this? What? Where's Mississippi. the Mississippi? Okay, go ahead. M-I-S-S-I-S-S-S-S-I-P-I. Sorry. For, this is the drunk episode, everybody. This is what happens. Columbus, we just get memory loss or amnesia. M-U, but for women. So don't get it confused with that other M-U. Okay. Um, okay. So, sister. Vita's sister. That's my sister. What's her Vita. name? Vita's my sister-in-law. But the but other, the sister of the sister-in-law, Rose. Rose. And oh, I okay. forgot to ask permission. So before we like make this, okay, on, no one tell on the episode, vow of no secrecy you know. within this I'll group here. I'll have to get permission first to see if it's okay that I use names. Okay. And otherwise, it'll go beep when I say her name. So. All these buildings are super old. Uh, Rose's dorm that she's staying in used to be an old mental hospital, um, oh. but now turned, you know, university dormitory. Oh, I'm enrolling. Sign me up, Missouri, Mississippi <laughs> right? Women's Institute. Old Mi- Mississippi dorm. Um, so it was rumored that there was a nurse that um, haunted the whole campus, though. And including this dormitory. So that being known, Rose uh, finishes class and she goes to drop off her books in their dorm. And so she goes in her room and she sees that her roommate's sleeping on the bed. So she quietly leaves her books there and she leaves. And uh, later that evening... She's back in her dorm and she goes, hey, I hope I didn't wake you up when I came in earlier and dropped my books off. And the roommate looks at her really strange and says, "Uh, I've not been in the room all day. (gasps) So who was sleeping in her bed? So just out of just out of curiosity, just out of curiosity, I had to do the search. I had to do like mu ghost hauntings. Yep. Absolutely. Thank you, Internet. Very first story pops up from some great website. I didn't uh, remember it. Uh. <laughs> frogs everywhere in my closet tonight. It, we have frogs outside. I think that's what I heard. There's oh, literally totally a saw and fall uh, climb out of the pond. Seattle earlier. frogs yep. of 2021. Um, this is what the Internet says. <clears throat> The ghost of Calloway Hall goes by the name of Mary. According to legend, Mary was a nurse during the Civil War who nursed a soldier back to health. She fell in love with him, but was heartbroken when he never returned. Due to her grief, she hung herself from the bell tower. Her ghost continues to haunt the halls and has been known to haunt students. Ride the elevator up and down. And appear in students' beds. What? Oh. I can't make this shit up. The internet confirmed it. I love that shit. I love when shit oh. happens and then you go That's for confirmation. Literally first link on there the internet. I- Mary the ghost. Okay. Haunting the shit out of the dorms. 
But why not all the mental patients? That's what I expected, right? You would expect like you're they're in a ha- an old hospital for mental patients, which we have learned now from past episodes are really a lot of drunk assholes, pretty much that they just <laughs> are like going crazy, like my great 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 grandpapa. Not everybody haunts a place. It has to be somebody who has a connection to the place, somebody who maybe has just intense energy. But that being said, I really love the idea of a sleeping ghost. That like <laughs> that's her way to haunt people. <laughs> it's like that is really interesting. I'm yeah, gonna, like, like you know, just ghosting is she's really just depressed. This is a depressed <laughs> ghost. Like, how do I feel like haunting? Gonna, I want to take a nap. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna lay here. Just gonna sleep just gonna, here. <laughs> I'm not even gonna bother to turn around and show you I'm a ghost. Yeah, that. Okay, my mind is blown that I forget the person's name. Carrie? Nope. Rose? Oh, Mar- we're making Wait, up who? a name. Who? I don't know anymore. Rose went to college. Mary's the ghost. Vita's my sister in law who told me this. Story. Okay, but Rose's roommate was the one sleeping? Rose? No, it was a ghost. Sleeping. I wanted more crazed, like, insane. I mean, a depressed ghost seems like a wasted <laughs> haunting, honestly. <laughs> Oh shit, she's just sleeping again. Right? And yeah. then she's just riding the elevator up and down. She's like, oh, no, no. she's just a downer. Downer yeah, Mary. Debbie downer. Just like haunting the halls, being like, Oh, you thought you had a good day? My boyfriend well, my boyfriend came never came back from the war. I don't know. I mean, I my my heart goes out to real life Mary. Ghost Mary. I'm sorry. I'm sorry that you're stuck there being a bummer to okay, bringing everyone this is down. Perfect. I want to tell one more story. Though, Please so you do. Have to hurry up and tell your story. Oh, okay. 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 I stapled today, everybody. Hey. I have two tidy pages. I don't have to search. So my next story, again, my good old friend FB. He's constantly writing me stories. I don't know. I just can't. Yeah. Uh, so this one comes <laughs> from, oh, I actually think I have two. I have two doppelganger stories, but I'll do this one first. This okay. one comes from, how do you pronounce the word, L, the name L-L-I, Lee. 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 So I've always, Lee. Ha, Lee. So she says, nope, just Lee. So I've always had abilities. Ever since I could remember, I've always been different. Premonition since three type of different. Well, one lazy Saturday, my mom and brother were cuddled up on the couch watching TV, and I was reading on the floor. I was eight, so this was forever ago. She asked me to get a blanket from her room because she was dozing off. I go to grab it, and as I turn around, I see my brother staring at me. Cold, pale, creepy. He had a gray tinge to his aura and appeared to be dressed in, Van- I almost said Vancouver, no, Victorian era clothes. Her brother? Her brother. I said, huh, how did you get here so fast? I didn't even hear you get up. He said nothing, just stared. A chill ran down my spine and I shook it off. Walking back into the living room, I lay the blanket on my mom and my brother pops his head out from behind her body. He gave me that same creepy glare and said nothing. About a week later, I wake up from a nightmare where he died and my heart was shattered. I knew he would die young and it stuck with me. Tried how, to Did she say sorry to interrupt? How did she say how old her brother was? Um at the time. He sounds like he was Oh, she was like 8. Did, right? Oh, so young? Let's say yeah, yeah, I'm going to say it was young. Say they're within okay. a couple of years of each other. Sure. So he gave me that same creep. Like he was. Wait, what? Okay. <laughs> I laid the blanket on my mom and my brother pops his head out from behind her body like he was hiding in the cushions. I get scared and asked how he got there later. I wake up from a nightmare where he died. About a week later, I wake up from a nightmare where he died and my heart gets was shattered. I knew he would die young and it stuck with me. Tried to just build a good relationship and bond with him from there on out. He was killed by a drunk di- driver at 23 in 2010. So that's the whole deal with doppelgangers is supposedly if you see a doppelganger... Yes. 
you end up like it's a, it's an omen. It's a very bad omen. You do not want to see a doppelganger. Um. Oh, Julie says I'm gonna give some live updates. Julie says my son just came downstairs sleepwalking and scared the shit out of me. Ha! I should stick to your podcast in the daylight hours. <laughs> Oh my God! It's the spooky. He's drawn to this. It's the crystals drawing him in. It's the crystals—they're too powerful. Yeah. Um. So yeah, doppelgangers are not a good thing. Everyone says, "Oh, I saw my doppelganger and stuff," but like historically, doppelgangers are a sign of a bad, bad, bad omen, supposedly. Um. So yeah, she saw her brother, but he was wearing Victorian garb. That is. That's what's very bizarre to me. So, uh, not that I'm not going to tell the full story, but I had a doppelganger story to- too, but mine was much shorter and not as great. So I decided not to tell it, but uh, I'm just going to. Yeah, please tell it. I want to hear it now. This woman, this woman, uh, walks, adult woman walks into her kitchen and sees her, uh, teenage daughter sitting at the table and she goes, Hey, how was school? Her daughter stands up walks into the kitchen completely ignoring her and she's like what the hell so she walks into the kitchen to follow her daughter no daughter there and then she looks at the clock and realizes it's only 1 30 and that her daughter is still at school yeah and, there's so and, many like stories of this sort of thing Say, it's almost like that the the moo the mem you the women's university same thing like the, it could have been a doppelganger how do but we know do- it was sad mary I don't know. I mean, well, apparently, though, it's notorious that Mary haunts the elevator and sleeping beds, sleeping in beds. That's her, like, M.O. Okay. Okay. I'll agree with that then. But that's good, though. There's a lot of stories like that where someone's like, and so many of the stories are like, how did you get here so fast? That's like, I looked at a whole bunch. I read a whole bunch. Like, do we have, do we have little doppelganger selves just around the universe, just like hanging out places, doing, mundane things like why would they show up right near death i don't get that though too or as a sign because True. time is not Life. linear mm. time is just a construct i don't know maybe who knows i have one more little doppelganger story too should i tell that one real quick too let's do it okay sure, we're here um doppelin I'm really hoping it's, yeah, it is a doppelganger one. I can't remember anymore because I copied and pasted earlier. Okay, so this one is again from... uh, Wait, are we caught up on drinks? Did you take your fifth drink? Uh, No, that's still your fourth? I don't fucking know. Oh, shit, girl. I'll drink another. Pour, pour, pour. Do it. I'll pour mine up too. Oh, wait, was that my fifth? I fucking don't. I don't know. I don't know. We're drinking another one. This one's from my mom. Who doesn't listen. (laughs) She would not approve. (laughs) It's okay. Mom, it's probably going to listen to this episode. Mom, I love you. Thank you for all your support. Always and forever. For for moms, for Mother's Day. Oh, yeah, Mother's Day. There we go. Cheers. Okay, this one comes from Carrie. And it says, I was about 14 playing with a Ouija board. Mm. And she says, bad idea. We've been warned. Whatever happens, happens. We've been warned. We're We're doing it anyway. Yeah, we are. With my 12-year-old sister and a friend, we had been asking it the typical little girl questions about which boys liked us and stuff like that. Just standard kid stuff. Possibly they read it on the box, back of a box of the Ouija board, right? <laughs> As recommended, per the instructions. Does Tommy love me? How- uh, okay, here's another. Will I pass my history test? What grade will I get? <laughs> Lacey to, will tell for everyone who arrived late, Britt got a Ouija board as a present at the very beginning of this episode. The back is very entertaining with lots of great suggestions. Okay, so (laughs) we had been asking typical little girl questions about which boys like us and stuff like that. Just standard kid stuff. They had been sitting across from me when the other girl looked up and started screaming her head off. Looking in the same direction, my sister joins in. They flee the room, and I fall right behind them in a state of confusion as to what just happened. Yes, you do. Yes, yes. you do. <laughs> if everyone else is panicking, you panic too. First rule of life, just panic. <laughs> First rule of panicking. <laughs> panic. <Do it. laughs> Join in. Uh, 
Okay, okay. They, 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 according to both, they had looked up to see a girl behind me who looked just like me, but was dressed in old fashioned clothing, mid to late 1800s period, from what they described. To this day, my sister insists on what she saw. She is 48, 48 years old now. Yes, and so many people saw it. I, I didn't even realize when I copied and pasted these that they both reference doppelgangers in 18th century clothing. Oh, I, you do have a theme tonight. I do. But like, what does that say about doppelgangers? Is it people being reincarnated or some shit? It's like their old lives. Yeah, like, Why is the old timey? They're coming to get them or something? <gasps> this does make me feel... You know, I feel more like inclined to believe time travel than I do UFOs. One quick pause. I have to uh, contact my tech guy. Hey, my she is a real my block computer. against the UFO guys. Who's who here is open to UFOs? Because in the comments, let's let's see. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Look, we got it. We it's, he's got a UFO shirt. Uh, Edmund Sir Engler. It, okay, we got one vote. <laughs> totally, yeah. Christy's on board. Hell yeah. Uh, I'm the Katie. Only one. Oh yeah. All right. Oh shit. Team UFO. Yep, Je Damn. Jenny. Katie doesn't know. Thanks, Katie. Me too. I, no, no. <laughs> she says yes and is a gesturing no, but or she's just. I, oh, and she's, she's saying yes. sorry, she's Brit. Yes. Is what she's saying. That's a uh, sorry, Brit. You're wrong. That's what that was. <laughs> <laughs> Julie's saying I really hope they exist. I don't even know if I hope okay. they exist. I kind of just like <laughs> feel like it's a really good possibility. And then no one else wants to chime in with their opinion, which means, oh, wait. They're asleep. They're sleeping, and that's okay. The, every, every one person in Star Wars is an alien. That is true. <gasps> Star Wars is not a documentary, though, Ed. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, no. He's shutting me down. Shutting me down. Oh, no. <laughs> no, he's shutting me down. He's Oh, oh shit! This is how I'm we sorry, lose I didn't listeners. Mean to, I, that was a spoiler. <laughs> shit! Ah, oh, I'm sorry, Ed. <laughs> um. Oh fuck! He got so angry and left. Okay. <laughs> All right, he's back. <laughs> I have one more final story. Okay. For you. Um, and I, I ha, I just have to tell it. It's so good. I want to hear okay. it. This one I got not from a family member. Surprise, surprise, even though I have 1,000 family members. Um, <laughs> this one came from our mutual friend, FB. Oh, FB. Oh, man. Um, Love this FB. This one is from Sean. When I was young, I worked nights at a residential home, and we had a chap. I actually think this person is from the What? UK. What? We had a chap. Oh, what? I was just wondering what hinted, like, what cl you know, clued you in. Uh, cause they called the person a okay. chap, and usually, like Americans, don't call people chaps too much. Can we start? Do we call people chaps? Who? I don't call anybody a chap. We've been drinking a lot. Okay. Drunk is out. I worked nights at a residential home, and we had a chap who was deaf and nonverbal. I don't know why, but for some reason, he terrified me. It wasn't that he ever did anything, and we communicated in our own way. Anyway, I was on nights and doing the hourly rounds and everything was okay. But at 3 a.m., his alarm went off three times. I went back to go check on him, but got to the end of the corridor where his room was, and I saw a plume of black just stuck under his room door. It wasn't smoke, just a mass of black. I could hear someone talking and saying, she's here from behind the door. I knocked and could hear whispering and a horrible laugh. <laughs> it's my horrible laugh. I knocked again and called his name and went to open the door and a man voice, a man's voice screamed, get out. I buzzed my colleague and as she walked towards his room, she said, I just saw him in the dining room. When she got to the room, she could hear the talking too, but told me the chap was in the dining room. He's not in his room. When, when we opened the door, the talking stopped. 
he had passed away seated in his chair with the most horrible look on his oh, face. Oh, no. <laughs> this scared the crap out of the both of us because we both heard the voices and my colleague has never fully recovered. Oh, no. Ugh. So this person, this person in the room was deaf and nonverbal. So it was never spoken. Oh, yeah. Word. Couldn't hear, couldn't speak. So they couldn't be the ones. Yet, yet coming from their door, they heard, she's here. And then the horrible laugh. And then the other the colleague heard the talking, too. And then the like a death and mask the- of just horror and like horror but even layers layers not only that the colleague comes in and she's like i just saw the dude i just saw the chap in the dining hall wait like he's not even in his room he's in the dining so was he dead in his room yes okay so who's in the dining hall i don't know who's talking (laughs) so many hauntings at Ah, once it doesn't make sense it doesn't add up one first fuck drinks Alcohol, brain. Hold on, you're, hold on. You're drinking a lot earlier than me. I can like take my purple pills and go sure. to bed. It's like nine. Mm-hmm. That's fine. It's bedtime. <laughs> hey, first, this is a rare opportunity yeah. where people can see our facial expressions. What is your death horrible? What do you think he looked like? Show us everyone your face. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> When I heard that there was a dark death, like a dark cloud stuck under the the Mm. door and there was some supernatural shit going on in the background, my immediate like feels with this is jealousy. (laughs) And then I hear the rest of the story and I was like, oh, no, 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 no. I don't want any part of that. But like. Ah, it's a little give and take. I kind of, I want that. Like, I haven't had any like weird, weird like, shit like it's that. So, it, oh, it's so many layers that I, I actually, I do. Maybe I should try to like contact because I have so many questions. So she had a dark, a, like a weird vibe from the person all along, but like, there's multiple people talking in his room at his death. He is outside his body. In the dining room, just so many layers. He can't speak and he can't see. Is that what you said? No, he can't hear. I feel like there's like a deal with the devil going on here. Like he Uh had to trade his, like some fucking Little Mermaid shit. Ah, La la la. You know, like he had to give his His voice. Ursula in his room. Yeah. Her like, her like octopus plume with smoke under the doorway. Exactly. Yeah. (laughs) That's what it is. It's Ursula. Solved. Oh, oh shit. I know that. Um, uh, shit. I want to sing this song so bad. Hold on. Hold on. Uh, no, I got it. I don't, I don't. I used to know that word for word, the Ursula song. Oh. Poor unfortunate souls. souls. So true. Take it. This one wants longing to be thinner. That one wants to get the girl. But <laughs> all right, that's all I got. Bravo. Brett's a better like <laughs> lyricist than I. Than I. Um, but yeah, I, I feel like he must have like sold his soul, and the de- he came to 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 pay his due. Devil, he had to pay his bill. Was his there dues. some <sighs> drunk is sold? <gasps> Disney karaoke, yes. <laughs> in the live, um, what is that called when he comes? Like his his bill was due, his debt was due. Um, that that double co- ca- I don't know. I'm thinking of a. I don't know. Uh, that's what I think happened. He sold his soul. He was probably very successful mm-hmm. in life, despite being like deaf and and mute, because he sold his soul to the devil. Alyssa, did we do it? Did we tell our story? I think we did. I had one? I had my last Rochester story, but cliffhanger. cliffhanger. Save it for another day. It's nine. It's like eleven for y'all. It is y'all paying the piper. That's it. He the, he had time oh, to pay the, the piper. piper. Thank you, Ed. I feel like we kept it together pretty good. I sang a lot, and you didn't sing I nearly did enough. I disagree. More. The musical. Skeletal's the musical. <laughs> Next oh, <shit>. live. <laughs> Bust out the ding-a-dee-ding. 
xylophone and we are gonna get on this shit. You, you ding a ding, poor unfortunate souls, ding ding ding. I don't so know that sad. song on the xylophone. I, so I know true. one song and it's the Skeletals <laughs> theme song. That's it. That's the only thing I know. Okay. This is so okay. let's wrap oh, it up. If you have if you have a story to tell, you can tell us in many ways. Email Alyssa. Skeletals podcast at gmail.com. You can call us 302-689-DEAD. We're not going to answer the phone, but you can leave a voicemail. And that's good enough. Hell yeah. You can also go Facebook message us on Facebook in our Facebook community at Facebook community. Mm-hmm. I don't know the fucking URL. Skeletales, Find us. Oh, yeah. It's called Skeletales. Skeletales we're community. There. Not just in the Facebook. Go follow us on Instagram. We're at Skeletales <laughs> Podcast at Instagram. I think. I don't know anymore, Britt. What, is, what are uh, we doing? We're, you know what? Yeah. You can rate. You can review. That helps yes. us a lot. Okay, focus. We're I can do this. Charts. We're a Skeletals Podcast on Instagram. You can DM us there. Love us. Go check out our videos. Mm-hmm. Do all that. We are on TikTok. We're Skeletals Twitter. on TikTok. We are on Twitter. Skeletals Pod. We are um, all the places. Just you find us. I think we covered yes. that shit. You know what? We got a merch shop. You want to buy us more drinks? We'll drink them. Yeah, this was a little too much. I'll, I'll admit right now. I went a little I went a little too hard by the end of this. And then I know we have an audience, so it's like adding to the I know, sorry everybody. You guys have been ultimate champions. Yeah. Serious. This has been like a roller coaster of events for tonight and you you guys are awesome for sticking with Hell yeah. I really appreciate okay, it. Okay, I now have a new wish and it is I want what? everyone to unmute and tell us all to haunt you later. Oh. Is that okay? Would everyone be can down with please? that? Can Every, everyone can unmute? Everybody unmute right please? Now? And then just say it at the same time. All right. Unmute, unmute, unmute. Some Unmute. Yes. yes. All right. Okay. Let's we're do ready. It. Okay. Is everyone ready? So, hey, hey. So I'm going to tell Britt to haunt y'all la- or y- you later. And then you guys can all say haunt y'all later, right? Is that how we do that? Yeah. Ready. Okay. Hey, yeah. Britt. Hey, Britt. Yeah. Britt. Yeah. Haunt you later. Haunt y'all later. Good night. Yay. Woo! Thanks, guys. We did it. Oh, my good Lord. Love it. You guys, thank you so much. You're awesome. Thank you. You guys are rock stars. Holy shit. Um, this is amazing. Um, it feels like the longest episode ever, which it has been. I don't think I'm going to. Is everyone okay with if I don't edit this? <laughs> this is like two hours. When I put it up. Right oh, wait. Wait. One more thing. One more thing. One more thing. What? One more thing. what?